Thank you. So today I would like to uh, talk on uh, dealing with uncertainty in optimization models using AIMS. Um, and um, I would like first to make a short introduction uh, to the topic uh, in the current context of uh, analytics and optimization. Um, then I will try to illustrate uh, some representative techniques for dealing with uncertainty by using one use case, namely in the field of power system expansion. And after illustrating these techniques on the simple model, I will also try to illustrate more application examples. So the context of analytics and optimization, um, everyone is uh, talking nowadays about uh, big, big data and analytics. Moreover, there are clear signs that um, algorithmic business is arriving, which means that company will be valued not just on their big data, but on the algorithms that turn that data into actions and impact customers. And of course, when it, we, when it comes uh, about uh, the data, um, there is a lot of uh, uh, discussion about data analysis as part of uh, the analytics trend, but at the same time we should not forget that there is a consistent body of uh, optimization knowledge that is part of the analytics field. Moreover, there are clear techniques to deal with uh, uncertainty in optimization models, and these uh, techniques um, can be incorporated in models by using uh, optimization systems like AIMS, which in the end can be uh, part of a larger decision support application or optimization application. So let me introduce the simple use case that I will use during this webinar. It's in the field of power system expansion. This is a strategic static model where we have uh, three types of uh, power plants, coal-fired, nuclear, and hydro power plants, and um, the problem is to invest in new capacity for the power plants. So we have to, uh, we, we have to deal with capital investments, but at the same time we also have to take into account what would be a typical pattern of uh, load uh, demand. And Load curve is in general distributed over the day in um, in in, um, in an uneven uh, way, but um, it can be in the end approximated uh, by using um, different uh, um, time uh, intervals, and in the end we can assume, and we will assume in this presentation that we have uh, two types of uh, demand namely uh, base demand, which is uh, demand present all over the day, and we have peak demand for peak hours. So I won't uh, go into uh, many uh, technicalities, but just for the presentation of this base model, so uh, these are the, um, this is the notation used, and uh, the idea is that we have um, new capacity decisions, which will be uh, here and now decisions that we have to make based on what we know uh, about our data. And we have also allocation of capacity to demand and also possible import of electricity for each uh, demand category. This will be um, decisions that have to be made uh, based on the actual realization of uh, the load. Um, deterministic model can be formulated uh, as presented on this slide. Uh, basically, we have um, the expansion capacity uh, decisions, the X decisions, and we have decisions for allocated, allocating uh, capacity to demand uh, categories and also possible import of uh, new capacity. And um, 
uh, we have a few other um, assumptions like for example the nuclear powers, uh, power plants cannot be used uh, during the peak hours. Um, the data which is uncertain here is um, the right hand side of, of the constraint which says that the um, uh, capacity that we allocate plus the, ca the capacity imported should equal the required electricity. Um, so it's the second uh, constraint in this formulation. So the required electricity will be on, on certain data in, in this case because we don't know for sure. We have some uh, demand figures, but we don't know for sure what would be a typical pattern for a demand. Um, a typical or um, traditional way to deal with um, uncertainty is to create a number of scenarios like for example in, in this um, on this slide so we assume that uh, we have uh, defined here four scenarios where we have uh, realizations of uh, base load and peak load So <clears throat> this is the <clears throat> use case that will will uh, be uh, illustrated um, in the SQL based on uh, different uh, techniques for dealing with uncertainty. Um, when it comes to dealing with uncertainty, of course, we can use uh, scenario analysis or we can use techniques like stochastic programming or robust optimization. Um, I think in the end uh, the goal is to um, create uh, some kind of uncertainty toolkit for decision support which means uh, have enough um, enough means uh, at our <coughs> at hand uh, in order to create meaning meaningful scenarios or maybe different uncertainty sets uh, being able to incorporate this uncertainty into the model and then optimize but of course also help the user understand the optimal solution in this case uh, what is the, the meaning uh, of the solution in the end for, for the actual application and also being able to anticipate and maybe to experiment with uh, next scenarios. Also part of uh, such a toolkit should be visualization of optimization data both inputs where we have to um, uh, the, we, we need to be able to visualize uh, what are the uncertainty in, in our problem. Also output data where it depends of course on the technique that is used which kind of output data is then relevant to be shown and also being able to uh, study the sensitivity of our solution with respect to different uncertainty levels. So let's start with uh, scenario analysis. Scenario analysis is a simple technique where we solve uh, each of the defined scenarios in, in isolation. So for each scenario, we can determine what the optimal solution would be just for that particular set of data. But then, of course, we end up with uh, many solutions and in the end uh, we need to make a decision. So we would like to have a decision that takes into account uh, all these individual scenario solutions and uh, make a trade-off between uh, the outputs in, in, in the various situations. Um, from the, from the modeling point of view, this analysis may be achieved by using multidimensional data manipulation uh, in AIMS, uh, procedural possibilities in AIMS, iterative modeling. Also, it is possible to sample from various statistical distributions. Um, what if uh, analysis uh, experiments using algorithmic support in uh, AIMS modeling system and uh, last but not least, also powerful graphical objects for visualizing input and output data. So in our use case, um, if we solve each scenario in isolation, then we determined 
uh, in each scenario uh, how much to expand extend uh, expand our uh, cap capacity in order to meet the demands in that situation so uh, each solution we uh, can uh, call a plan so for every scenario we can based on every scenario we can create a plan and for the four scenarios that we mentioned before so in this situation we would end up with um, the, the expansion decision decisions included in the first table um, what we can notice here is that uh, nuclear power is not used at all in any of these uh, individual scenario solutions also in some scenario solutions um, we may need to import additional capacity um, or in other scenario solutions um, not so if we evaluate for example plan 3 uh, based on scenario 3 data across uh, all the other scenarios then we see that uh, in some situations we would need to import and in other situations not um, the procedural possibilities that I mentioned uh, in AIMS um, can be illustrated by such a procedure. So, using uh, the algorithmic uh, uh, features of AIMS, we can write procedures where, for example, we uh, fix the, the we fix the solution as determined in, in one of the plans and then we evaluate the solution over all the other scenarios and uh, of course we can in the end also compute uh, an average performance of a given plan over all the scenarios. So. Um, of course, in the end, we can also um, show the data using uh, the graphical user interface of AIMS. Uh, from here, we can um, we can run the procedures that solve the, the individual scenario models, or we can run the scenario analysis, and then we can visualize the data, like in the second table here where every plan is then evaluated across all the scenarios and for every plan then we can also compute an average performance and of course if this average performance is our performance measure then um, we can choose from the scenario solution the one that in average gives uh, the lowest uh, cost. Um, this uh, slide also an ante anticipates a bit on the next approach, the stochastic programming approach, because um, basically in, in AIMS it is possible to represent a stochastic model uh, by just introducing explicitly one additional index, namely the scenario index, and then representing uh, the constraints of our model where scenarios are involved by using uh, scenario dependent uh, variables. Um, so it's possible to formulate a also a stochastic model by using explicitly an additional index in your uh, model symbolic model uh, formulation. And in this picture we see already uh, the, the plan 5 which would be based on such an explicit formulation of your stochastic uh, model and we can already notice that, that the plan based on the stochastic model already gives a qualitatively different solution because um, this solution not only invests in uh, coal and hydro uh, capacity but also the nuclear capacity is now involved. This uh, qualita quali qualitatively different solution tries to make a trade-off between all the four scenarios represented, <coughs> uh, all, all four uh, situations represented by, uh, by our scenarios. So as I mentioned, 
stochastic programming is another technique that can be used for dealing with uncertainty in optimization model and besides uh, the possibility of uh, explicitly modeling all uh, constraints using an additional scenario index uh, in AIMS we have introduced an automatic model generation for stochastic programming this means that the modeler only builds a symbolic deterministic model uh, defines the stages of your decision problem and uh, then uh, maps uh, the variable to different stages so the decisions that have to be made will belong to different stages uh, corresponding to the decision decision problem and then creates a scenario tree and uh, supplies the stochastic data this is uh, what the modeler needs to do um, AIMS will generate uh, the stochastic model instance in its extensive form based on the data supplied by the modeler and this generation is done automatically so it means without the need to reformulate any of the constraint definitions by this um, um, AIMS provides much flexibility in experimenting with different situations so building different mappings between variables and stages and experimenting with different scenario trees um, for the scenario generation part AIMS also provides a scenario generation module which helps the modeler to build these scenarios so there are pre predefined procedures for building the scenario tree and the user needs to specify so-called so -called, uh, callbacks for the scenario generation module um, these are procedures that the, the modeler is allowed to customize and if they are specified as callbacks then the, the, the module provided by AIMS can just make use of, of these callbacks <coughs> In a callback, of course, the user will ac accommodate the stochastic data for the situation at, at hand. So, for example, if a, a parameter is declared to be stochastic, then uh, AIMS creates a dot stochastic suffix for that parameter, and this can be then filled in uh, with uh, corresponding data in, in the callbacks that are then provided to the scenario generation module. and um, this module uh, provides uh, means to generate scenarios either by branching which means uh, tree, the scenario tree is incremental, incrementally created according to a given distribution for events at each stage so we start with the root and then at each stage we uh, branch and define the, the data for the next stage and so on also by data bundling which means uh, we have a given set of scenarios so starting from uh, which means a path starting from the root till the, till the leaf and uh, similar scenarios then are grouped at different levels of this in the scenario tree so for example if we think about a situation where we generate a time series uh, the data for a time series then we have uh, from for each period we will have some data such a path from the first period till the next period will be a scenario and then if we have a set of such scenarios then we would like to create a tree such that um, the data is let's say non-anticipative meaning so in the road we only know um, what what some data that is available in the road and then the data in the next stages uh, have to be made uh, the same because the decisions at each stage only take the data into account that is available in that stage and in the previous stages but not the data from the future so the main execution scheme for automatic stochastic programming uh, may be represented like this um, for deterministic model uh, 
aims uh, works with symbolic variables and constraints and now if we add the stochastic information like uh, state defining stages mapping between variables and stages build, building scenario trees specifying probabilities and stochastic data all this stochastic information can be then combined with uh, declarations of the deterministic model and um, used as arguments of a function like generate stochastic program which will automatically generate the, the stochastic, stochastic model in extensive form so it will build the stochastic generated model matrix and of course this matrix then can be sent to a solver and it can be used in, in the same way as the matrix which would be generated for a deterministic model. So in order to summarize the main concepts, deterministic model is a symbolic uh, math program, stochastic model is a generated math program instance which can be created automatically and changes in the deterministic model and in scenario data will propagate automatically to the regenerated uh, instance of the stochastic model. Once we have generated the model, of course the model can be solved by using a standard solver, but uh, at the same time for uh, stochastic linear stochastic programming, AIMS provides also a Benders decomposition module which implements uh, the nested Benders uh, algorithm for uh, multi-stage uh, stochastic programs and this can be used as alternative for um, the standard solvers especially if uh, the resulting uh, stochastic program will be very large so for the use case that uh, I described in the beginning we can visualize uh, the matrix generated for the stochastic model uh, this visualization shown here is uh, achieved using the math program inspector in AIMS and of course one can easily recognize the block structure that is specific to stochastic uh, programming models because uh, some constraints contain uh, both the, the first stage decision and the second stage decision the second stage decisions depend on the scenario so basically for every scenario we will have such an entry in the in the block matrix. Um, so the same results that we've seen before based on the explicitly formulated stochastic program can be retrieved by using the stochastic model generated automatically by AIMS. We see again um, the investment in uh, all three types of um, uh, power plants and um, at the same time uh, the, the call to the gen generate stochastic program uh, for the use case at hand uh, is shown here at the bottom of, uh, of this slide so basically we supply the deterministic model but also the sets of uh, stochastic uh, parameters and stochastic variables also scenario probabilities and the scenario tree and based on these inputs then um, AIMS generates uh, the GMP stochastic matrix. Other technique that can be used for dealing with uncertainty is robust optimization. <laughs> Robust optimization is a modeling framework where the uncertain, uncertain data belongs to some ranges or regions or maybe depends on some partially known distribution. Um, what is specific for robust optimization is that feasibility must be guaranteed so we have hard constraints that uh, must hold for all the data in in the set that we assume to be our uncertainty set. So uh, robustness in this case means uh, finding the best solution against basically the worst possible data realization within the uncertainty set that we deem to be uh, 
uh, appropriate. So, in other words, if we consider a linear program like um, on this slide, then uh, the constraints have to have to be satisfied satisfied for all realizations of uh, our data, say in in the technology matrix, assumed to be within an uncertainty set. And of course, the robust model would be then formally uh, um, expressed like a semi-infinite uh, mathematical programming model, because if if we have all certain sets with uh, infinitely many uh, data realizations, and we uh, ask our constraints to be, we requ require our constraints to hold for all this data, then our model at least formally has infinitely many constraints. But the good news, of course, is that uh, under some conditions um, there exists a so-called robust counterpart of this model, which has just finitely many variables and constraints in it. And um, this this robust counterpart so is uh, well defined in the robust uh, optimization theory for the situations where it exists. So <clears throat> coming back to the formulation, of course, there are a few questions. How to specify a reasonable uncertainty set meaningful for practical application? And when does an uncertainty set lead to computationally tractable robust counterparts? Um, an assumption that has been made uh, at the beginning of uh, the foundation of, uh, of uh, robust optimization is that uncertainty set can be described as a linear uh, combination of some basic uncertainty sets. And by basic uncertainty sets, we mean uh, sets like boxes, polyhedral, polyhedrons, or ellipsoids. Meaning, uh, instead of having just uh, looking just at nominal value of our data, um, we can consider, for example, a small box around that nominal value or a small ellipsoid around that nominal value and require our constraints to hold for all the data in that set. Um, initially, robust optimization was focused on immunizing a single stage optimization model against invisibility. But later on, the scope of uh, robust optimization has been extended to model dynamic optimization problems, for example, multi-period uh, models. And in that case, so we talk about adjustable robust optimization. Um, the term adjustable comes from the fact that we can distinguish between, uh, say, decisions that are here and now that are supposed to be independent on our data realization and decisions that are adjustable, so that may depend on the data. And then our robust optimization model will be formulated like shown on this slide, where uh, the uh, coefficients of uh, the non-adjustable variables are assumed to be some kind of linear combination in our uncertainty data. Of course, um, the difficulty comes from the fact that we assume uh, dependency between uh, non-adjustable variable and our data, and in general, if we assume any kind of dependency, then um, the problem is very hard. One way to uh, approximate this problem is to assume a so-called linear decision rule or an affine approximation. This means that our non-adjustable decisions are assumed to depend linearly on the data, so like shown at the bottom of this slide. And this means that um, uh, the coefficients of this, lin of this linear decision rules have to be determined in the, in the same way as the non-adjustable variables. So we would like to determine, besides the non-adjustable variable x here, we would like to determine also the coefficients u and v that are used in the linear decision rules. We would like to determine them in a 
robust manner and if we do so then uh, the adjustable decisions are then a function of our data but not an arbitrary function but a function that uh, is affine. So from uh, the, the AIMS execution point of view we have uh, a similar scheme as in case of uh, stochastic programming. So AIM starts with a deterministic model and then based on uncertainty information like regions, dependency, uncertainty constraints and which variables are declared to be adjustables and what are the linear decision rules. All this information then combined with uh, symbolic uh, information of the deterministic model are then used in uh, the generator bus counterpart function that generates this uh, robust uh, matrix, the matrix of our robust model. And of course the, the great advantage is that um, this step is completely automated and um, so by that we get automatically the robust counterpart meaning uh, a model with finitely many variables and constraints but which is equivalent with saying that our deterministic model how uh, uh, the constraints of our deterministic model hold for actually infinitely many uh, sets of data. So summary of the main concept, deterministic model is a symbolic math program, the robust model is a GMP instance which is created automatically Again, changes in deterministic model and in the uncertainty sets will propagate automatically when we regenerate the robust counterpart. And this is this, this happens uh, by using generate robust counterpart function that takes the, method, the deterministic model as argument and the set of uh, the sets of uncertainty parameters and the set of uncertainty constraints. So if we uh, go back to our use case. We were talking there about uh, four scenarios which are denoted here by S1, S2, S3 and 4 and because we had values for uh, base load and peak load we can represent the scenarios uh, in a plane by, by uh, dots in a plane and um, then of course we can, for our robust optimization uh, approach, we can look at the data that it's around the area defined by these scenarios. For example, we can look at uh, all data realizations that are included in the polyhedral defined by these four points. Or we can look at the, the data that is an ellipsoid around these points. And of course, we can also vary the level of uncertainty, so we can consider uh, larger ellipsoids or smaller ellipsoids. The, the larger is the, our so the set, uh, the more conservative our solution will be, because we require uh, our solution to be feasible for much more uh, data realizations. <coughs> and um, in the use case, what I mentioned about um, data um, uncertainty so uh, applies in the following way uh, our instantaneous demand so demand that is in, in uh, mentioned in, in the beginning uh, can is assumed to be uncertain so can be within some uncertainty sets either box or a small polyhedral or an ellipsoid and the parameter that is actually used in the model is a so-called required electricity which depends on the instantaneous demand because we have also demand duration so product between duration and the instantaneous demand will be the required electricity used by the model so uh, this is a simple illustration that our required electricity is a linear function of instantaneous demand and if instantaneous demand is assumed to be in some basic uh, uncertainty set like uh, boxes, uh, polyhedral or ellipsoid um, then uh, the required electricity will inherit this uh, uncertainty. 
also when it comes to our decisions so maybe uh, good to clarify so we have the new capacity decisions this will be our non-adjustable decision this has to be uh, determined independent on the data realization and we have uh, adjustable decisions like capacity allocation and the import capacities and we will assume of course that uh, this uh, adjustable decision depend linearly on our data so that the linear decision rule applies to our adjustable variables so if we solve uh, our power system expansion model for um, in, in the stochastic in, in, in this robust optimization uh, situation uh, in aims we can of course use the powerful uh, procedural features and the user interface features we can choose um, the type of uncertainty that we would like to include and then solve the corresponding model and uh, we can represent uh, uh, solution both adjustable non-adjustable decisions and ad adjustable decisions using graphical objects um, with respect to adjustable decisions so uh, for this problem uh, the let's say uh, if we look at capacity allocation this capacity allocation is declared to be adjustable so it has property adjustable these are uh, uh, language extension uh, in aims uh, that have been introduced uh, specific for robust optimization and in the dependency attribute we can uh, specify that uh, capacity allocation is to uh, to be uh, linearly dependent on required electricity and if we solve our problem then of course uh, what we get are the coefficients of the linear decision rules so the constants and the coefficients that are used in the decision rules and this combined with the values of our electricity will result in the values of the adjustable decisions which can be then evaluated for various data of our electricity so basically uh, we we determine in a robust way the coefficients of the linear decision rules and this then gives in the end also the values of our adjustable decisions which are not fully determined but they are determined only up to their coefficients in in, in the rule okay so uh, so far we were trying to illustrate uh, main concepts for dealing with uncertainty based on a simple um, simple model um, of course in order to uh, provide a broader view on the topic we can also take a closer look to uh, more application examples so um, the discussion so far was mainly focused on two-stage models we had two-stage uh, stochastic model for our use case we had a robust model where we had only uh, non-adjustable decisions and adjustable decisions so roughly divided in two stages but in many models we have actually to deal with multi-stage uh, optimization so we have for example uh, uh, production and inventory optimization model where uh, a number of uh, time periods uh, are uh, involved um, and in this situation of course we have to map our decisions to different stages a very simple way to map decisions to stages is to assume that every time period becomes a decision stage but at the same time we could also think of an approach where the first time period is our first stage and then the next two time periods are our second decision stage and the last period is another decision stage so it could be that several time periods are part of the same decision stage and uh, the advantage of uh, using games is that this mapping uh, can be manipulated very easily so one can easily experiment with different scenario trees so 
for such a model, we can, of course, after solving deterministic model, we can uh, create, um, we can assign decision to stages, and we can define our uh, scenario tree, how we would like to branch. For example, a simple approach would be to have uh, low, medium, and high uh, branches at each stage. And then we can uh, generate the stochastic uh, model uh, automatically and solve it. We can solve it either using um, a standard solver or using a nested bander of the composition algorithm, which is provided in uh, the AIMS module. Um, also, it is possible to, while we are experimenting with different scenario trees, it, it is possible to visualize the, the tree that we are building and uh, this gives uh, more insight into uh, the input data that goes uh, in our stochastic formulation. Another uh, application that I would like to mention and also uh, another type of approach would be uh, the combination between dealing with uncertainty and an approach like rolling horizon. For example, if we have a production and distribution optimization model where we have to deal with many time periods, like let's say uh, maybe 100 time periods, where data is also uncertain, so we have patterns of data for different scenarios, um, a common approach is to use a rolling horizon because then we are not forced to solve uh, uh, one large model at once, but we can uh, uh, we can build a solution by um, solving um, a number of iterations. So, for example, solving the first ten time period and then moving one step forward to the next time uh, next ten time periods and so on. Of course, when we ro use the rolling horizon, that that can be an approach also if our data is completely deterministic, but it can be also combined with solving uh, some kind of uh, stochastic model at each iteration of the rolling horizon. And, for example, in AIMS, if we do so, then at each uh, iteration, then we can um, register the, the some part of the solution in, in, in the overall planning that we would like to do for the entire horizon and we can uh, we can use the graphical features of aims to visualize the, the solution in slices so every slice corresponding to one of the scenarios and maybe combined with one of the time periods Such an approach where uh, an op optimization model with uncertain data is then combined with rolling horizon can be also used for a problem like unit commitment and energy dispatch. Um, typically here we also have to deal with a number of time periods and um, we have uh, a number of uh, power plants that have to dispatch uh, in each time period uh, energy according to some demands. Uh, this, this is a simple example that uh, we illustrate here. So um, if we, for example, assume that we have um, uh, a few genera generators, like five generators, and then we have uh, demand figures for, uh, for, for electricity, then uh, the problem is uh, how to commit our power units, which would be a first stage decision, here and now decision. And then also once we committed the units, how to dispatch the energy that these units can, uh, can generate. So the energy dispatch would be a wait and see decision because demand for uh, electricity can be actually uncertain. Um, in this case, I would like to discuss a possible robust optimization approach to this problem. So, for example, if we assume that uh, the system demand is actually uncertain around the nominal values 
and we can assume some kind of uh, level of authority, for example, 5 or 10 percent. So then we end up with some bandwidth around the nominal uh, system demand. Uh, we can take this into account in uh, a robust optimization approach, solve the model, and um, get uh, some robust solution for that level of uncertainty. Um, of course, in such a situation, it's very important to evaluate how how good is our solution, for example, compared with the nominal solution. A possible approach for this is to um, run a simulation. Uh, in each simulation, we can fix either the nominal solution and then evaluate that over a large number of samples or robust solution and then evaluate that as well. If we do so, we can show, for example, for the unit commitment and energy dispatch problem that quite a large uh, saving can be achieved uh, by uh, using the robust solution. So the average performance of the robust solution is significantly better than uh, the average performance of the nominal solution when we evaluate both of them in the same way by using a simulation. Also, this can be also seen in, in such a, in such a uh, plot. Basically here all the simulation points are shown. The blue dots represent the the samples in the case that the nominal solution was evaluated, whereas uh, the red dots represent the, the samples uh, and the corresponding uh, uh, cost in case of the robust solution. What it can be noticed from this picture is, of course, that if, we, if you use a robust solution, then um, the outcomes uh, in different uh, uh, simulated situations uh, are much more stable, so we we end up with costs that are in a more stable bandwidth than if we would implement the nominal solution, which uh, shows quite high uh, volatility with respect to uh, uh, these samples. And of course, we can also study, for example, um, how much improvement so what is the improve, improvement percentage of our robust solution uh, compared with the nominal solution as as function of the uncertainty level? And we see that uh, in this picture that uh, as we increase the uncertainty level on the x-axis from left to right, uh, the more, the higher the uncertainty level, um, the higher is the percentage of savings that the robust solution uh, achieves compared with the uh, nominal solution. And a last uh, application that I would like to uh, discuss briefly is, uh, for example, uh, the problem of uh, flexibility in manufacturing networks. Um, in this problem, um, a number of products have to be produced by a number of plants for example, cars that have to be produced at different uh, plants. And uh, the, of course, in that case, each plant has to be specialized on a type of product. It has to have the right uh, production lines that are specialized for, for example, for a certain type of car. Um, and specializing plants on a specific uh, product type, that is... Uh, is a complex decision because demand for uh, the products is usually unknown. And of course, uh, specializing a plant on a type of product, it's, it's a decision that involves a uh, high uh, cost. Um, the problem of flexibility is how to specialize plants on different product types such that you can, in the end, uh, cope with the the demands and more specifically with uncertainty in the demands. And of course, if you have uh, so-called two flexibility, so for example, every 
if sorry if you have uh, if you have uh, every plan specialized in every product then you have you would have full flexibility you would be able to produce uh, any product at any plant but of course that would be a very expensive solution uh, there is some kind of claim in in this area that uh, two flexibility can bring the same benefits as full flexibility and two flexibility would mean that every plan would be specialized on on uh, two products of course when demand for products is uncertain then um, the problem becomes more complicated and moreover this is a type of problem where whether or not to specialize a plant on a specific product that that is a discrete decision whereas how much to produce from a certain product that is a continuous decision so when we introduce uncertainty on the top of such a mixed integer programming model then the resulting uh, problem <coughs> will be uh, of course uh, much more complex because we have complexity that comes from uh, the combinatorial nature of the mixed integer problem and on the top of that we add uh, complexity due to the uncertainty in our data but uh, we were involved in a project where a robust optimization was involved uh, on such a problem and um, we've seen that um, such a problem is amenable to a robust optimization approach um, again we can of course uh, use the automatic uh, generation of the robust counterpart uh, available in names and it can be shown that um, if we look at deterministic nominal solution and we compare that with the robust optimization solution using a similar approach as we discussed before namely a simulation where we evaluate both solutions on, on, on a large number of samples it can be shown that uh, the robust optimization solution in this case um, performs much better so um, that means that here we not only decide on the amounts that uh, are produced but also we decide in in a robust way how to specialize plants to be able to produce uh, some types of products and possibly also how much to expand the capacity of of of, of a plant at the same time with with the the, the specialization decision so i hope that uh, these examples uh, provide uh, as I said, a broader view on uh, on the matter and also on the available uh, AIMS features for dealing with uncertainty. Okay, thank you, and uh, um, I would like to announce that our next uh, AIMS webinar will be over one month, so 16th December at uh, 5 p.m. CET. Um, and uh, more information will come on our uh, website in the product webinars part so please uh, follow this uh, please please uh, <coughs> look at this uh, part of the website uh, in the coming uh, days or weeks uh, for uh, the subject that will be uh, discussed uh, next <laughs>